and welcome to Our Time. Here's a taste of who I'm chatting with this time on Our Time. Watch this. special guest, Joseph Simons. Hello. Hi welcome. there. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I'm amazed. I've watched I'm the you... one at the front. Yeah, I was about to say that. I've watched <laughs> you for some time on a lot of your YouTube clips and different stuff that you've put up on social media, and it's like you've been on rocket fuel. Oh, that's very, very kind. Your energy is extraordinary. Yes. Um, yes, my energy is probably um, my uh, main brand when it, comes to, um, when it comes to my professional career. Well, to dancing and all the other things we're going to talk about. Yes. But, um, being a male dancer, sometimes in this country we don't really understand how difficult and how physically consuming mm. being a male dancer is. I yes. mean, being any sort of dancer. But... Being a boy, you've got a lot of flack usually around you about being a dancer. Hmm. Did you suffer from that when you were a kid? I didn't, no. I, I, was, I was very lucky, um, uh, actually. I grew up in Dubbo in New South Wales. Um, uh, no, I was, I was uh, very lucky. I think that while I was very... Uh, uh, I was a very energetic um, sort of theatre kid, um, but I, oh, were I you a certainly kid? oh very much so. Um, In the sense that your parents were involved, or yes, no. So my mother is a um, is a rather extraordinary musician, and she was a um, a sort of a, a local uh, singer. She had her own album, her, her own oh, single out identity. at the time. Well, there you um, go. And uh, and so she uh, put myself and my two uh, sisters. Uh, I'm the, the youngest of three, uh, with two sisters above me, and the three of us um, were put together as a, a singing group when I was probably about four. Uh, we were called the Simons Family Trio. Of course you were. Somewhere, somewhere <laughs> between the sort of Von Trapp family singers and the Partridge family. And okay. we, was she involved? She, uh, my mother would, um, would play. Uh, and, what did she play? Uh, she was a, a yes. pianist. And... Uh, she would take us around uh, various um, uh, cities around New South Wales and we would sing at events and, uh, and other bits and pieces. What so, sort of songs did you do? Oh, uh, look, I mean, I definitely remember, you know, I'm a Believer by the Monkeys okay. and, and, you know... So they were uh, popular uh, the, songs of the time. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Of, of the time. Of we're talk, time. We're talking early 90s. Of her time. <laughs> of her time, absolutely. Um, and, we, and we had sort of, you know, real cute factor to spare. So when I... Uh, was about five, so we'd been singing now for um, uh, for about a year or so. All three of us were put into dance class, and over time, um, my sisters sort of um, found other interests or uh, dropped out, and uh, and I never did. Did you find that it just came to you really naturally? Your body was just like a well-tuned violin; it just worked. I have definitely become more of a technician over the length of my career and now as I um, as I lecture in in dance that certainly becomes a very critical part of um, of what I'm interested in passing on to uh, yeah, to younger sure. performers um, but look the love of it required no uh, fuel um, but certainly the technique and the technicality how and many, the athleticism so took obviously time. you went to a local dance school but I did how many classes a week did you do? So by the time I was probably about um, 12 or 13, I would uh, be doing roughly four to five hours an, a, an evening. Uh, so post... Uh, five finish, days finish, a week and five, then all day Saturday. Five days a week and all day Saturday. Yeah. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I was doing my I, normal you, academic school and then those things yeah, in the evening. Yeah, you know, I think people don't actually realise what dedication you absolutely have to do to yes. be good. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, what, what, how many hours are you supposed to do to become a master at something? Uh, a lifetime, I think. Sure. Um, so I was uh, trying to cram a lifetime then into my teenage uh, training years. Was it, at, as you were at day school, was it, I can't wait to finish this and get to the studio? A little thing? bit. I, did, I, I enjoyed school very much. Like I, I was saying, um, I wasn't... Uh, 
I don't, I don't exactly have the same story of uh, you know copping a lot of flack as being a male dancer in the 90s. I think mostly no, it's, mostly students have changed are, a bit. I think then, yeah, because um, the, like the hip hop and rap dancing, it's sort of really come into the ether of life for most people. I certainly benefited from uh, things like So You Think You Can Dance become, coming onto sort of mainstream television and that yeah. sort of thing, which certainly uh, provided an education for a lot of, um, uh, for a lot of people. But just, uh, I think more than anything, uh, Rather than bullying me, most people just ignored me, um, which is fine too. Um, I, I You're very thrived hard to ignore that. as a performer, I've got to say. Well, you know, I channel it all onto onto the stage. Well, see, I first saw you, uh, and we were just talking about this a little while ago. It was actually here in South Australia in the Wine Centre. That's right. At Pitch sessions for I can't remember the acronym. Uh, it, it used to be called Long Paddock. Oh, for Long Paddock. Okay. Yes, but we have our own pitches here now, anyway. Yes, um, in South Australia, as do Victoria, uh, for performers looking for, or basically to be employed to do their show, whatever they. Yeah, so, so pitching. Long Paddock was a uh, a pitch session designed for uh, shows that were available for touring. Yeah. To uh, to pitch to uh, producers, theatre managers, and. Uh, and other institutions uh, around the country. And I had uh, received the Tanya Lika Fellowship um, one year prior, which was given to uh, one Australian choreographer every two years um, to go to Berlin and to Frankfurt in Germany uh, to do a residency there. No pressure. I, no pressure at all. No but I, um, I was given that uh, fellowship very um, I was very privileged to receive that, and uh, and in my time in uh, Berlin began uh, work on the creation of a new uh, dance cabaret, which I was calling it at the time, uh, which was called First Things First, and uh, and when that was complete, I returned to Australia, and I think Long Paddock used to be in one city, yes, one a, a different city, yeah, city different each city year, each year yeah. and it happened to be Adelaide, yeah. um, which I hadn't really been to before, uh, but, and, I, but I pitched first things thing first. do it at the wine centre of all places. Look, you know, the big it's, barrel. it's a space, it works. It, well, and, it did. Uh, but can yes. I just explain to everybody, so this um, rather extraordinary person came out and danced for us, and then he left the stage, and then this other person walked out and thanked the person who'd just performed. The person that was thanking was now in a suit not what he'd just performed in, and it was all you. And we all went, what? Who is this guy? I did a very quick change, Malcolm. You did, through the thunderous applause. Because <laughs> what you did was quite extraordinary and very unique and very original. Yes. But, uh, OK, but that was then. And we're just sort of talking about also then. So as you grew up, so you, you uh, left the Simmons family, the singers. Yes. And what was your teenage life like? I mean, doing obviously high school and mm. then working after that. Uh, so I, uh, I certainly, I mean, look, the the simple and honest answer is that I spent every waking hour in that dance studio. Uh, Were I, you given a chance to create stuff for yourself? Yes. So oh, from right. the from the age of about fifteen, I was um, I had become then a student teacher. So being one of the senior yep. um, uh, students, but also starting to become an assistant teacher and then uh, eventually a choreographer by the time I was about 17 or so, uh, choreographing works for a, for a lot of um, the students, yes. Well, that was like the little clip we showed at the beginning. Mm. That, how long ago was that? That was uh, a few years ago, so that was in Brisbane, so You're it would have Brisbane. been a, about four or five years ago, right. yes. Pre-COVID. Oh, wasn't everything. Remember? <laughs> yes. It's amazing how quickly we've forgotten in many ways. Look, I think everyone across the whole globe has a very fuzzy memory of yes. a certain well, two, we don't three want year to remember period. Things like that that That's we don't right. want to remember. That's right. But um, with everything that you've done, mm. is it been? Do you want to work, or did you want to work with ensemble dancers? Did you want to be a feature dancer yes. or a choreographer? What did you sort of feel you would be heading towards? I always was interested in the creation of theatre. Um, I, as I said, I was really fortunate to receive some opportunities to start to choreograph and create um, throughout my teen years, and uh, and that was a really important development time for me working with younger dancers um, 
and just experimenting and being given free reign. Uh, that was very crucial. I was also writing quite a lot uh, during that time. Um, so I knew that directing, writing? writing plays and, oh, okay. uh, and, and uh, so scripts. So you'd see yourself as very much an all-rounder, not just a dancer. I would now call myself a director, choreographer, writer, dramaturg, lecturer. So in, 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 within theatre, yes. Yeah, it's a lot to put up on the I, I, top of the program. It used to be a thing, and I don't think it is much anymore, but uh, the, the term slashy um, uh, was a thing, which means sort of dancer slash actor slash yes, thing, yes, those yes. sort of uh, things. So I'm somewhere in that world. It's hard because um, in Stuff for Mine, there's a whole lot of those slashes, and you think, look, I'm t this is just what I do. You know, uh, yes. do, do I need to describe what I do? Look, this is what I do. The, the the short answer nowadays is theatre maker, um, yeah. is, is probably the easiest... I'm not easiest crazy for the word category. work. I'm, we're mm. doing another work. It's like, oh, you're choreographing something, it's got a name, what is it you're actually doing? You know, yes, I think it's... A... To the general public, a work is very confusing. Yes, there's a, there's a few different terms, work, uh, piece, project, show. Show's uh, always good. Yeah. Because yeah. hopefully that's what you're going to do in the end. <laughs> We're usually making things for audiences. Yes. Well, otherwise you're doing it all for yourself in front of the mirror. Yes. But I guess you've got to do that too. You know, you've got to devise the things and look at yourself doing it and see if it works. Look, I... Um, or mobile phone filming, which is a which big is, thing Which now. has become, become a thing now too. Uh, the mobile phone is a has become a really fascinating uh, tool for, for creation of work because it can act as a mirror, essentially a mirror that can remember. Yes, uh, So you, exactly. can, you can watch something back. All the dancers are filming everything to remember what they did. Now, look, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> we're going to be back in a tick and we're going to show you some of this amazing man and some of some extraordinary photographs that you've had taken over the years as well. So stick with us and we'll be back in a tick. Welcome back. Our special guest is Joseph Simons, extraordinary choreographer, dancer, show producer and many other things. And we've got a shot of you here. Mm. In which show was this? So this, uh, I believe, that, yes, this is a, a shot of, uh, of First Things First, the, the show that we were talking about uh, And as you earlier. said, the show we first met. That's a, yes, this, it, this is yes. what I was wearing the day that we met, Malcolm. But um, you, but you slipped is, on a suit almost straight away. Very, very quickly, yes. Very so quickly. A, a quick little performance. Um, yes, so this is um, uh, the work that we were talking about earlier that was made in uh, Berlin. Uh, and this show uh, toured around... Uh, about 30 venues around uh, Australia, yeah. including well, here in Adelaide. Here in Adelaide, I think you did seven venues. Yes, that's this right. Is, this would be a publicity shot, I'm assuming. Uh, this is just a production still, actually. Oh, that's, okay. that's me, mid-performance on stage. Look at that face. That, that tells a million stories. <laughs> well, it was a, um, it was a, a very special uh, contemporary dance um, uh, work. Um, I called it a dance cabaret mostly because in the style that cabaret is to tell stories or anecdotes and then break into song, I would do that and break into dance instead. Yes, and, uh, that was sort yeah. of what sold us the concept of doing your show. Look, it really... It was, so diff it was just so different and so engaging. It was a very special piece and I hold it very fondly in my heart because it was such an important uh, step in the, in the career as becoming a, uh, a, a creator and performer and, uh, and writer myself. Lighting's always important, but I, I like this shot we were talking about. Should we show mm. this shot or not? And I said, well, that's a favourite. Yes. Because no. actually it shows off, you know, just how muscular and how well developed you have to be to be a dancer. There is, there is certainly uh, an athleticism to it's that. It's all about the legs and then what you do with the upper part of your body as well. But if you have that strength in your legs, it's extraordinary what you can do. Well, certainly, uh, you know, because uh, of my, my body, a lot of photographers have... Um, uh, I've been very fortunate to work with a lot like of photographers. This, this is a, an amazing uh, American photographer called Brian Jamie, who's based in New York City. And, uh, and when I was in, on tour, there, Brian uh, uh, reached out and uh, invited me to collaborate on this particular shoot. Are you, uh, are you in midair there? Yes, that's a jump. Yes, it's incredible. So uh, and and I it, think sorry, that, it's almost like you held the shot. But what about this shot? Yes, no, that's a that's a jump as well. Um, so 
I think what's what's been really useful as a as a dancer and uh, who's been put in front of the the photographic camera a lot, uh, it's really allowed me to know as a dancer what the what the audience sees and therefore what the camera sees mm. and, and be able to collaborate with photographers to really find a, a shot that is suits this, their vision. Is this shot, was that um, a landscape or a portrait shot turned the other way? No, no, that is the, that is the floor. That is you me. You literally were. I, I uh, pushed off the floor, hit that pose and then landed again. So that is the height that, uh, that the, ju the jump is. Oh, thank you very it much. It is. Now, this is you being... <laughs> More than a dancer. Yeah, so this is, this is uh, we're now stepping into uh, more recent times, which is me now working with uh, the students at the Elder Conservatorium of Music in the Music Theatre degree at uh, Adelaide University. And, uh, and it's been a real privilege to, uh, to work with those students uh, in the studio and directing um, uh, productions as well. Uh, passing on the knowledge that I've gained in my career. But you look so young. I know. It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. Oh, thank you very much. But, but your career is going... Are you going to miss the performing stuff now that you're actually doing the other side I, as well? I began the phase out of performing um, around five to six years ago um, where... Body hurt too much as a dancer? Look, that is certainly uh, one of the, um, the elements, mm. uh, a, a career in... In, in sort of ballet and contemporary dance and eventually into, into music theatre certainly creates uh, certain issues within the body. Um, mm. You just can't stay 21 forever uh, as well, much as people would like. Well, comparing it, say, to a football player, because, mm. you know, at the moment there's a lot of talk about the damage that yes. a lot of the sports people are incurring yes. through the training, just putting your body on the line all the time. Very much so. So dance is, has a very similar uh, discussion around that, um, uh, that early 30s uh, age bracket, which, uh, which really is the time when, you, when one starts to feel the body start to age. And, um, mm. and I would like to say that uh, nowadays, even as I, um, I still perform to a certain extent, but much more, um, uh, directing and, and working with other performers. Mm, but you also, I, it's knowing what your body is still capable of doing, not mm, trying to put yourself into that position. That's right. I, these I would days, say, all I do is sit down and talk to people. <laughs> and what a treat it is. I like doing this very much. No, but, what, but, you know, it is. It, we've all got to sort of find the next reinvention of ourselves. Very much so. And, and as I was saying um, uh, earlier, when I was a teenager, I knew that directing and choreographing and making theatre was where I was destined to go. Mm. But, of course, while you're, um, while you're able, uh, you, know, you, you, you use the body you that you've got. And, uh, and it's been a real... Uh, privilege to be uh, on stage and to be, uh, you know, choreographed on or photographed and uh, and travelling uh, around the world in various um, stages. Uh, but it's but it's very special now to uh, to allow the body to rest and to pass uh, the knowledge yes, instead. Because if you don't pass it on, it's lost forever, and that's that would be a crime. I that's feel. right. Yeah. Um, do you feel though? Uh, as you as you are developing, do you have um, like a desire to create a lot more, or are you working within the confines of what music theatre needs? Does that um, make sense? Uh, not really. Okay, so there's so theatre shows now that were traditional music theatre or musical comedies. Yes, they used to be called. Yes, usually had. You know, pretty people playing every role. Mm. There'd be someone that was a bit overweight playing a mother or a baddie or something or other. Yes. Now, music theatre is being written for a lot of different sort of types of people, sizes Certainly. of people, races of people, and so on. Yes. Do you feel this is a good? Oh, obviously, it's a good thing. I think I think the uh, the the world of theatre has certainly uh, embraced, and I think that theatre has always been uh, one of the most progressive industries in our society. And it's certainly a commitment to representation and diversity has certainly become uh, a really hot topic in the last couple of decades. Mm. And that's certainly uh, being reflected on our stages, which I think is a wonderful uh, well, thing. Well, that's the reason I asked the question, because mm. if you aren't the, the perfect showgirl body, mm. if you're not the perfect male shape or whatever, but you are really attracted to performing. Because mm. the other thing is, 
What do you perform for? Do you perform for yourself? Do you perform for the people watching? Who do you perform to? Who do yes. you perform to, do you um, feel? Uh, well, I, I certainly uh, feel that I'm, when, when on stage, I mean, performing for the, the audience and, and creating work for a range of different people in the audience. And it's why the, the, the term representation uh, becomes uh, an important discussion there. Mm. I think what's so exciting about music theatre and theatre in general is that it's about storytelling and we want to tell a variety of stories. We want to be able to uh, inspire, excite, educate, thought-provoke uh, a range of different stories and to do that we really must um, broaden beyond the slender white uh, performer mm. look and so uh, and I think that that's a really exciting well it is a really exciting time uh, mm. in theatre to see uh, new work being created for a range of different uh, backgrounds of well, it's performers. The stories you're right it's the stories and they're not all about thin white people that's right quite frankly yeah yeah what do you want to do when you grow up then? I would love to continue to uh, direct and write for theatre. I've become uh, particularly passionate about dramaturgy in the last um, uh, few Just years. Just explain for people who don't understand that so, term. So the term of drama, uh, being a dramaturg, is often uh, when a theatre work is getting created, uh, someone who perhaps isn't necessarily on the creative team, one of the roles of director, music director, choreographer or designer, uh, who would come in during the process as an outside eye uh, to, to see what's, um, what's being created and basically to offer feedback, thoughts and advice on uh, is this what you wanted to say because this is what I'm seeing and that is a, a role that I've become particularly passionate about um, more in recently. Way, it's like a director for a director. Mm. Sounding board for whatever. Yeah. Or for a writer or, or yeah. for a performer, um, which allows uh, a work to develop in a more sophisticated way before uh, being shown to a full audience. The reality is when you go to see a show, there's more people behind the scenes making the show happen in the first place. There is more people than you can imagine. Yes. <laughs> and that's just the thing. Having the knowledge going through some sort of education in our industry, yes. having that, you may not be the person you thought you wanted to be, but you may find your whole life behind the scenes. I think that a lot of, um, uh, a lot of people throughout uh, the arts industry often discover new little nooks, crannies, avenues yeah. and pathways within the industry that um, perhaps, uh, you know, a lot of people come into the arts wanting to be a performer. Yeah. And that's, that's understandable. And like myself, are a performer for a certain amount of time and then things um, alter and change and, uh, and, and new parts of the industry open them. up. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Speaking of changing with them, we're going to change for a quick minute and we'll be back in a tick. Joseph Simons has been our guest in this episode of Our Time. Joseph, what's next for you? What's coming up at the end of this year for you? So coming up at the, uh, at the end of this year is just honestly more of the same when it comes to uh, the university academic year. Uh, nowadays I spend uh, the, the end part of my year writing reports and, uh, and finishing up with, uh, with all sorts of assessments. Are they going to be useful to the performers like when they're auditioning for a job so that, so that a prospective employer actually understands what they've learned, what they've done? Very rarely in an audition um, would a audition panel I've ask to been. see paperwork. Yes, um, I've never <laughs> asked for that, but I just wondered. No, that's true. Uh, when we... Uh, when we're creating an academic degree for a theatre course, it is true, we, are, we, we do work in quite a different um, model to law, science or, um, mm. or, or, or medic, medicine. Uh, what a lot of our, um, our reports and, uh, and things talk about is the development of the skills itself. Singing, dancing and acting is our main fields um, in a music theatre degree and so uh, the reports are about the progress of a student's 
skills in those uh, in those areas. So we certainly you know, do a lot of uh, feedback and development um, reporting uh, throughout the degree, and that's do, what I do, do at the do end of the year. Do a lot of students find that difficult? Because constructive criticism is the only way you're going to really learn. Mm. But do you find that everyone is really quite happy to accept that? Very much. In a tertiary institution... Because they really want... That's it. In a tertiary institution, the, uh, the cohorts are hungry. Uh, different perhaps to a younger um, age group. Hmm. When you are at a university level, these students are coming in wanting to improve, wanting a career. Because this is what I want to be. Absolutely. And yeah. so they're looking for... Uh, to create as much employable skills as they can prior to graduation. So uh, it's why I love tertiary uh, institutions. Because they're hungry. Teachings. They are hungry for yeah. it. They want to improve and they are a pleasure to work with. So they, uh, they take on criticism very well. So in 10 seconds, if someone's watching this who really wants this, what advice would you give them? Look, I mean, it obviously ten depend, seconds. depends on the age. Oh, 10 seconds. Oh, gosh, I feel like I'm already down to eight. Uh, look, six. when it comes to singing, dancing and acting, the answer is class. Uh, going to as much uh, different singing uh, lessons and dance classes and, and acting opportunities as, as one can. Just absorb, absorb, absorb. Absolutely. Oh, look, we lost our screen. Oh, oh it's, it's back, back again. Uh, and we'll be back again next time on our time. For now, Joseph, thank you so much. It's been really lovely talking to you. Thank you very much. And good luck with everything in your future. Thank you. And in your future too. Until next time we see you, keep yourself nice till then. Bye.